So our aim is to determine the effect of light on silver chloride and silver bromide. Okay, so we want to know what the effect of light is on these two substances. Now these two substances were very popular before digital cameras were invented because we use them in our photographic film. You know, in the old, I don't know if you guys remember, or maybe if you were too young to remember before the digital age, film had silver ingrained in it, and when it got struck by light, it would change, and then you'd get a photograph, essentially, of what's going on. These were popular back in the olden days, I suppose. So the method we're going to use when we produce this is we're going to have to prepare these silver chloride and silver bromide solutions first. We prepare precipitates of the white silver chloride and the cream-colored silver bromide by mixing silver nitrate with sodium chloride and sodium bromide solutions. So if we want to create silver chloride, we use silver nitrate, which is this, and sodium chloride. Now we'll just quickly double check our solubility rules here because this will may stuff stuff up if we don't get this right. Nitrates are all soluble, which is good. It means that that won't precipitate with anything. The sodium, all group one metal compounds are soluble. That also won't precipitate with anything. So we're okay, these are both good. Now the chloride will precipitate with the silver and give you the AgCl like we actually want. And that's what we do. We just mix these two chemicals together and it'll form a white precipitate, which will be silver chloride. Now if we want to make the silver bromide, all we have to do is replace, we're using the same silver chloride, and so we're not changing that chemical, but we're just going to put bromine here, and so we'll get silver bromide on this side. So that's the chemical reaction that's going on in step one. Okay? And we're forming this crystal, or this precipitate, using these methods. Then we go and take those two solutions that we've made, they now are in, have all this precipitate through them, and obviously if we want to get the precipitate out, we can filter it. So we filter each mixture to obtain samples of each precipitate on filter paper. So there we have our filter paper or our filtering device. Just pour it through the filter paper and then hopefully the silver chloride or silver bromide will just be stuck in the filter. Now place the open papers on watch glasses, either in the sun or under a UV lamp. You may not have access to a UV lamp like this, but the Earth has its own UV lamp 200 million kilometers away and that's the sun so we might as well use it. You just put your silver chloride in the filter paper and the silver bromide as well. Put them on a watch glass and then leave them out in the sun. Or if you do have a UV lamp available, you can use that also. Now UV lamp would be preferable because mainly, because you don't know what else is in the sun spectrum. That could also alter your results a little bit. So we, by using a UV lamp, you're just making your results that much more accurate. And then all we do is compare the color changes with a control sample not exposed to light. So we take the samples that were in the sun and we look at them and we compare them to a sample that we didn't leave in the sun. We just put them in the dark somewhere. And then we see what the differences are. And the reason why we use a control is so that we can actually see if it was the light making these changes or if it was something else that we didn't account for. And I'll give you an example of why that's important. So let's say your silver chloride, you had two samples of silver chloride, one in the sun, and one in the dark somewhere you left it in a cupboard and one you saw the one that turned black you saw the one in the sun turned black there are lots of other things happening in the environment that could have done that may have done that what we do is we look at the control and say well did the control the one in the dark turn black if not then it must have been the light because other, everything else should be about the same the temperature and pressures are about the same and you know the composition of the atmosphere is about the same in both places you can see that if one changes and the other one doesn't, then we know that it was the different variable that would have made that change. So that's why we use a control to ensure that we see that we can attribute the change to the variable that we think it is. Okay? So here are some results that you'll typically find. Now, if this doesn't happen, don't be worried. Lots of things go wrong in scientific experiments, particularly in school ones, because they don't always go the way we plan. The silver salts will darken quickly, especially in UV light. They can turn from this white color, this would be silver chloride, to purple. So it'll be purple first. And if you leave it out there long enough, it'll turn black. That's what you expect to see. And that's what happens in the photographic film. The dark grains, so these purpley grains of, of silver chloride, are due to the formation of silver, as in not just silver chloride, as in pure silver. When you expose silver chloride to light, you form pure silver crystals or grains. And that's the darkening, that's what happens. So safety. So we always have to talk about safety because schools are all about OH&S. Silver nitrate, there aren't many dangers in this prac, but just be aware that silver nitrate can make 
dark stains on skin and clothing. So I've gotten silver chloride on my fingers once. I had, you know, black stains all over my fingers for, I can't even remember, it would have been at least two or three weeks. Not dangerous at all, but not particularly attractive either. Just be aware of that. For clothing, it lasts even longer because for your skin, your skin comes off. Like it rubs off and new layers of skin grow. So the layer that was affected by the silver nitrate will eventually come off and then you're sorted. But if it's on your clothing, it probably won't come out ever. Your parents will be very, very upset if you get it on your clothing. So don't do that. And the way to avoid that is to wear aprons. That's, this is key. Very, very important for the clothing. And goggles, so that you don't get it in your eye, which I don't think I've ever seen happen, but you know, sometimes it can. And gloves to avoid having a situation like me, having black stains all over your fingers. This isn't really about safety, but it's all about minimizing the amount of inconvenience that you might experience. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on this first-hand investigation. So we've looked at what the prac is, and it's looking at the effect of light on silver salts, which is, and it turns white crystals purple than black. And then we've looked at the method, how to prepare these things, and also how to do this safely. Okay. 